hospital. to set kind of like a standard, it's going to be my official starting weight, that way, you know, whatever weight I end up with, I'm going to use this weight for all my stats. So all my calculations involving like weight loss per week, weight loss in you know, total, um, yeah, I'm going to be doing that. So, so 186.2 pounds, an estimated 14.3% body fat and 47.1% muscle. So I actually use all the stats. So I don't just say like, okay, I got the weight, I'm done. I actually do use the estimation of the muscle and the estimations on body fat percentage, especially. Now, how I use that, we're gonna go into it. Mm -hmm. How was this school? I really wanna talk about my, this is, I was gonna say patented, it's not patented, but I think I'm the only person who really gets into this much nitty gritty, this much detailed analysis. Okay guys, so a little bit of backstory as to my overall process when it comes to measuring my progress during a cut. The reason I do this is because how else are you supposed to know exactly how well you are doing? Because if you're doing great, good, keep going. And if you're not, you need to make changes. And this is how I always know exactly how well I'm doing. A uh, few numbers which I look at, weight loss on a weekly basis, uh, body fat percentage loss on a weekly basis, and for example, these numbers here in green, these are like my all-time best. So like my all-time lowest body fat percentage, all-time lowest weight, all-time highest uh, muscle mass, muscle mass percentage, things of that nature. And in addition, I'm able to do projections, trajectories. For example, right now, I know exactly how fast I'm going. And I'll always know, am I slowing down? Am I speeding up? In case I ever do slow down and I hit a fat loss plateau, I'll know, Igor, it's time to make changes. It's time to get more aggressive with your diet. This really has helped me in the past. And uh, it works with my clients very well because I never want to be in the dark. I know exactly what I'm doing and exactly where I'm going to go if I keep up my current pace of weight loss. I don't just say like, here's my weight, and then next week I was this weight, and then next week I was that weight. No, some people do that, but I take a lot more of a detailed um, approach. So yeah, 186.8 pounds, pretty good considering this is the start of my cut, and this is pretty much where I was after losing already 18 to 19 pounds last year, which took like literally two months. Also, just in case you guys are interested, and actually I know you're interested because I've had a lot of people ask me about this, that scale, is from Vanity Planet. I do have like a kind of thing with them. So if you guys are interested, you can use uh, the link and the discount code in the description below. It'll get you like 60% off or something. And I'm going to be using, that's what I've been using for like months now. That's my go-to skill, mostly because of that body fat percentage estimation. We talked about in the past how any kind of body fat estimate when it comes to a scale is done through electrical impedance, which is kind of like an electrical current goes through your body. Now, normally those it's impossible for it to be that accurate, but in my experience, it's been pretty damn good. Like visually what I look at and then what the scale tells me, it's not off by more than like 1%. So, I mean, I personally have been using it for months without even talking about it, like on any social media. So I do like it. So if you guys are interested, link in the description below. Welcome to Ascension episode two. Today, I want to get right, you know, right into the good stuff with this series. And I want to get into stuff that's very helpful for you guys. I want to explain to you my battle plan, my strategy. Never go into something, at least in my opinion, something as, you know, important as a diet, as a competition prep, as, you know, whatever it is that you are doing. If it means a lot to you, you have to go in with a battle plan. What do they say? Like I've said it before, fail to prepare and you must prepare to fail. Yeah, that's real. And uh, right off the bat, look how beautiful this is. This is amazing, guys. This is my view. You know, it's sunset. It's like five, six o'clock. You have, it's not the ocean, but it's like, it's kind of like these little canals they have that lead off from the ocean. The, o the actual ocean's over there and it kind of like leads leads into here and then you have like all these like you know fancy houses they're all kind of like on the water and it's just god i'm so fortunate that this this is my balcony this this is my backyard my entire life my dream was to live in a place where i had palm trees anything else like whether i'm fancy rich this, that's all great but palm trees they just they just they make me happy i don't know what it is about it but they're awesome also guys, just a warning, before we get started, I'm probably gonna be talking for a solid 10 to 12 minutes just about my macros, my exercise, my overall diet strategy. So if you are not interested in that and you wanna skip straight to the good stuff, straight to the workouts and the actual, if it fits your macros, full day of eating, I'll leave a full table of contents down below so you guys can skip ahead, It'll probably be like nine, 10, 12 minutes in. So check it out down below. But if you're interested in learning like my actual overall strategy and you're ready for a little lecture, stay tuned. So. 
Seeing that this is a vlog, I'm gonna be just, you know, talking and showing you guys my life, but at the same time, seeing that this is a Vitruvian physique vlog, there is no way we're not gonna have a whiteboard. So guys, this is my battle plan. This is my strategy, at least starting off. There's a possibility that this will change as the weeks or the months progress, and as my physique changes, it adapts to the program, and I have to, you know, essentially get more and more aggressive, because like I've said in the past, your body's gonna fight you back. Your body likes staying the exact same. Doesn't like getting bigger, doesn't like getting smaller, AKA leaner, it just likes to stay the same. So whenever you're pushing it to one end of the extreme, crazy obesity or like crazy shredded, it doesn't like doing this. So the harder and further you go, the more it's gonna fight back and we'll have to make adjustments. But in the meantime, this is my current macro strategy, whatever you wanna call it. Protein, 200 grams. Um, I've talked about this in the past, uh, when you're cutting, you're gonna need a little bit more protein as opposed to when you're bulking because your body is a lot more, is a, there's a much higher chance of your body actually taking that protein that you ingest, those amino acids, breaking it down and using it for energy as opposed to maintaining or synthesizing um, muscle fibers. So you have to increase your protein just a little bit. When I was in the lean bulking season, I was eating like, I can get away with something as little as like 150, 160 grams of protein. And that was at like 200 pounds body weight or like 190-ish. Now I have to go for 200 and I'm only in like the mid 180s in terms of body weight. Protein has to go up a little bit. This is just above, just a little bit, you know, a hair above one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Fat, 60 grams. So fats, you know, it's, it's okay. It's low, but not too low. This is probably one thing that in the coming, you know, month or two, I'll probably drop down to where it's 55, potentially even 50 grams. Fat is about, this is about 24% of my current calorie intake. You guys can figure that out. Just take your calories, multiply it by a certain percentage, 20%, 25%, whatever. Then divide that number by nine because there are nine calories per one gram of fat. So take your calories, multiply it by a certain percentage, divide that number by nine and you have X grams of fat. In my case, the answer is 60. Next up, carbohydrates, 215 grams. I like to keep my carbohydrates as high as possible but keyword being as possible. I know guys significantly smaller than me in terms of height, in terms of size, yet they can diet on like 250, 300 grams of carbohydrates. Think like, the birds are having like a friggin' seizure. Think like Matt Ogus or someone. The guy's like, you know, we're not too far off in weight, but he's like five, seven or something, me being like closer to six feet, and yet he could diet on like 250, 300 grams of carbohydrates easily. Again, different people with different metabolisms. And a big differing factor is uh, your daily energy expenditure. Do you live an active lifestyle? Are you walking everywhere? Are you exercising a lot? You know, if you do it, if you have like a desk job and you don't really do much, chances are your daily expenditure is going to be a little bit lower. And in doing so, you're gonna have to diet on less calories than someone else who may be similar or smaller size, as long as they, they move a lot more. That's the only way I can put it. They move. It's called NEAT, uh, non, exercise activity thermogenesis, pretty much like any kind of movement or exercise you do on a daily basis that isn't actually exercise. It, this isn't like going to the gym or doing cardio. This is like, do you walk to work? Do you take the stairs? Do you, are you, are you, do you work at a desk job or are you a landscaper or a construction worker who's gonna have a very high energy output on a daily basis, not from exercise, just from work, just from day-to-day -day life. So because of mine being it's not high, it's not low, it's fairly medium. I spend like eight, literally I spend like 12 hours a day sitting in a desk, editing videos, answering emails, you know, things of that nature around my business, around YouTube. My daily expenditure of energy isn't as high as I'd like it to be, so I have to diet on slightly less carbohydrates than I would like. Slightly less calories, which for me are 2,200. My maintenance is probably around somewhere around 2,550, 2,600. This puts me at a calorie deficit of about three to 400. Not too high. I don't start off jumping right into a 500 calorie deficit. Um, I'll probably get to that soon, but in the meantime, we're starting to get nice and easy. We're ramping up, we're like easing into it. Uh, so in the meantime, 2200, but I would not be surprised if very soon I have to jump down to 2100 or potentially even 2000, which I don't like doing, but if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. So that's it, that is my macronutrients, that is the most important stuff. However, there's a couple of things, you know, other things I'm tracking. Uh, fiber, I want my fiber to be about 35 to 40 grams on a daily basis, this is as recommended. This isn't really like bodybuilding, this is just general nutritional health. But there is a bodybuilding component to it. Uh, from a health standpoint, you want a good healthy fiber intake. For a man my size, it's about 35 to 40. For women, it's like 25 to 30, something around that nature. Fiber is good for gastrointestinal health. Uh, it's good, good for overall like, I don't know how to put this because it's like 
we know what fiber does, okay? It makes you regular, let's just leave it at that. And another good uh, bodybuilding component, like I said, there is a bodybuilding factor to fiber when you are cutting especially. Fiber, although it is a type of carbohydrate, it's not metabolized the same way as regular carbohydrates. Fiber, it's not as easy to break down and utilize for energy. So unlike all other carbohydrates, whether it's healthy carbs, bad carbs, whatever, sugar or oatmeal, doesn't matter. Every carbohydrate is going to equi it's the equivalent of four calories worth of usable energy for your body. However, fiber, it's kind of up in the air, it's kind of controversial, but for a, a good way to look at it is about two calories, so essentially half. Every gram of fiber you eat, even though it is a gram of carbohydrates technically, unlike regular carbohydrates, it's going to provide half the energy and thus it's going to be easier to put you into a calorie deficit. Think about it this way. Let's say I was doing 50 grams of fiber. 50 grams of fiber means instead of being 50 normal grams of carbohydrates, which would equivalent, it would be the same as our tour right here. So, nice job, Igor. Way to keep things on screen. 50 grams of regular carbohydrates times four calories, again, four calories per gram of carbohydrate, it's gonna be about 200 calories. However, when it comes to fiber, it would be actually times two equals 100. Trying to like, trying to like write it. Even though you're consuming physically the same amount of weight in terms of carbohydrates in the form of fiber, you're still getting that food, it's producing half the calories, which is excellent because the more high fiber food you could eat, it's gonna help you feel full, it's gonna help you feel satiated, you're not gonna be as uh, prone to going over your calories and your macros and dieting is gonna be a little bit easier, yet you're technically getting half the actual calorie or half the actual energy input into your body, thus technically making it easier to stay in a calorie deficit. So. What some uh, people actually do, or some food companies actually do, is when they stay carbohydrates on their nutrition labels, they, they do something called net, net carbs. This is pretty much the carbohydrates after they've subtracted fiber. Quest bars do that a lot. If you actually look at Quest bars, and you were to just do the math, you know, protein times four, fat times nine, carbohydrates times four, it would come out to something like 260, 250, yet their actual calorie intake says 190, and you think, well, it doesn't make sense, the math doesn't add up. It's because of fiber. Quest bars are very high in fiber, and they, 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 tell, you net, uh, they tell you net calories. I don't know if I really agree with that. I like to be very conservative. I don't like to make anything like too easy. I don't like the idea of like, oh, well, this is fiber, so that counts. It's the same as those people who are like, oh, I took the stairs to work, so that's an extra 50 calories. No. Stop making it that easy for yourself, you know? Just do the damn work. Don't like try to, you know, don't take so many damn shortcuts. You're never gonna get anywhere. So fiber is nice, but I don't do the whole net calorie thing. I'm not like, well, it's times two calories, so I can eat more. No, none of that. This is nice, it's easy. I try to up the fiber, but I don't shortcut myself in any way, shape, or form. And finally, cardio. Cardio, I am currently keeping ad hoc. What I mean by that is that I do cardio as I see fit, whenever I want, if I require. So the other day, actually, I think it was like Ascension, like day two or three or something. I went over my calories. I ate a little bit too much. I had too much. I had like a Snickers or something. Too many carbohydrates. I was over by like 200. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. It sucks. And uh, what I do to compensate is I just went for a jog. It was like midnight. It was beautiful. I ran along the coast. Loved every second of it. And uh, I burnt like two, 300 calories. And when I came home, my net calories for the day were okay. Again, it's calories in, in terms of food, subtracting calories out in terms of additional energy expenditure in the form of cardiovascular activity, whatever cardio it is, running, Stairmaster, I don't care. If you get your heart rate going, you get, you get sweat going, that's cardio. So take the food, subtract the cardio, and my net calories were perfect for the end of the day. And uh, I realized that I needed it that day. Other days, if I don't need it because I stuck to my macros and it's the end of the night, I don't need cardio. It's perfectly plausible and perfectly okay for people to diet down to like 8%, 7 6% body fat, get absolutely shredded without doing a single minute of cardio. Because as long as you stick to your macros, as long as you consistently eat according to your macros, according to a calorie deficit, you don't need cardio. I personally like to do a combination of both. I don't like to like, diet so hard and never do cardio because it helps a little bit if you ever have like a bad day. You have like you know you have like a one too many cookies or chocolate bars or or whatever. This kind of helps you like you know get back down to normal. And in addition, just from a cardiovascular health standpoint, I like doing this because I don't want to be one of those guys who like you know I, I start sweating and I'm out of breath because I walked up two flights of stairs. That's not my goal. I don't I don't want to be like one of those like 300 pound bodybuilders who look amazing but like. You know, they just have terrible cardiovascular health. They, they ride a bike for five minutes and they're about to have a stroke. I don't want that. A nice healthy combination of both. 
do your cardio, get your you know, cardiovascular health up, but at the same time, stick to your macros. Diet is the most important thing. Exercise will help. Cardio is a tool to help you get there, but diet is the most important thing, guys. Calories are king. Macros are like queen. They're both very, very important. And um, that's it. This is my uh, this is my strategy, at least going forward. Will I have to make adjustments, you know, in the coming weeks or months? Probably yes. And when that time comes, I'll show you what to do. <sighs>okay what the hell was that all right that music is not gonna work guys welcome back to yet another workout commentary today we are doing deltoids i haven't done one of these workout commentaries in a little bit of a while but uh, that's one of the reasons why i'm so excited to get back into my ascension series because you know it's just standard fitness there's no fancy gimmicks there's none of this there's no there's nothing it's just here's my nutrition here's my physique here's my workouts let's learn a little bit hopefully learn a little bit and um, just standard, basic, old school, classic fitness. Today, we're doing a very basic workout, focusing on a lot of free weights. We're talking dumbbells, we're talking uh, dumbbells and barbells. And the majority of my workout, I'm focusing on hitting all three heads of the deltoid. If you guys don't know, the deltoid, you know, looks like one kind of nice little circular basketball, or at least I wish basketball. It's more like an orange sitting on your skeletal frame, but there's actually three different heads to the deltoid. There's your front, side, and back deltoid, or as they're technically known as, anterior, medial, and posterior deltoid. You need about one to two exercises to target each head of the deltoid, specifically that is. So you can't go to the, the gym and say, I'm gonna work out deltoids and just do like four workouts targeting your front deltoid because you're gonna end up with this kind of weird lopsided deltoid where it's very big in the front and then on the side and the back, there's nothing there. Medial deltoids are so important because when you have side deltoids, it can give you an additional like, you know, 0.5 to one inches of width on either side of your frame. That's gonna make you look wider. That's gonna contribute to your X frame. It's just gonna make, it's gonna give you a bigger, more aesthetic overall masculine physique. One of the most attractive things in terms of women, if that's one of the reasons why you guys are training, they actually did a survey once and they realized that abs are nice, arms are nice, all of these things are nice, but the most attractive thing for women is actually overall V taper. Well, there's a couple ways you can contribute to this, obviously a small waist, a big broad back, but good lateral deltoids and having overall a wide upper body is going to contribute to this extremely. So this exercise right here actually is another excellent lateral deltoid. Um, I like to do one with dumbbells in the beginning and then you can use a machine if you have one, this gym didn't have one. So I'm using cables and um, that's pretty much it, guys. And another really important thing, and you know what, I see you guys doing this all the time. They start swinging, they start using momentum. At, you know, it gets to a point where, you know, the specific muscle that you were trying to target on that day is doing like 40% of the work and 60% of the work is coming from momentum, it's coming from swinging, it's coming from like you doing all this crazy Tai Chi shit. And pretty much it comes down to your actual specific muscle. The reason you're in the gym you're not even giving it the proper workout. Honestly, drop the weights. I used to do like lateral dumbbell raises with 35s and 40s because I wanted to feel like a big man. And then uh, I started filming myself for YouTube and I realized like, guys, what, you know, what the hell am I doing? And these days I dropped it down actually early, earlier in the workout. I was doing it with about 14 kilos, which it's not even 30 pounds. It's not a crazy amount of weight. However, an additional form tweak is I was actually doing them seated. That really takes out that ability for you to cheat. You can't throw up, you know, use momentum on your reps. You get more time under tension and specifically focusing on your lateral deltoids or whatever muscle group. This applies to all exercises. I'm doing deltoids today, but this applies to everything. And in doing so, you were able to isolate contract and get maximal time under tension on your actual muscle group. Don't be a dick. Don't train with your ego. But until then, guys, I just want to go on a little bit of a rant because I mean, I see so many guys, they walk in the gym, they grab like 70 pounds, they start doing dumbbell curls, but you know, they're using their back, they're using their legs, they're using everything but their biceps. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Come on, come on, come on. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed Ascension episode two, and I'll check in with you in Ascension episode three. I'm thinking of doing a full day of eating. If you guys want to see that, let me know. Yes, no, good, no, maybe so. Uh, leave me a comment. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you learned something, leave it a like, and I'll see you in the next video.